Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Abby, and today we've come together to discuss the changes of the new EYFS and more importantly, how they're going to be implemented on the Blossom platform. Over the past few months, we've been speaking to around 60% of our customer base um, and finding out how they're going to be implementing the new EYFS. We've also been going through this process within our own nurseries ourselves. We're aware now that different nurseries will be using Blossom in so many different ways. So our ultimate goal has been to make Blossom as flexible as possible. Now let's take a look at the Blossom app. What frameworks will be available to use on Blossom? So on Blossom, we're going to continue to support the existing EYFS. So that's the Early Years Foundation Stage 2012. Um, we're also going to continue to support the current characteristics of effective learning. Um, addition, in addition to that, we're going to be supporting the new development matters, uh, the development matters observation checkpoints, the characteristics of effective teaching and learning, um, as well as the birth to five. So that's the birth to five matters and the birth to five characteristics of effective learning. So on Blossom, how will we be implementing the changes? So if you're planning to use the new development matters, um, this is how it's going to look for you. We've tried to keep it as straightforward as possible um, and really try to minimum minimize the, the changes that we have made. Um, so if I just tag a child in and everything looks the same here. However, when you link to the frameworks you'll be able to then select from a list um, and if you're going to be using the development matters you would just click into development matters 2021 um, and here you have the different areas of learning um, the age bounds are just across the top and you could mark the progress for each of the statements if you wish um, as emerging developing or secure I know that some nurseries want to come away from emerging, developing and secure, whereas some nurseries will want to continue to use them. Is there any way on Blossom that we can reflect this change that nurseries might make? Yes, absolutely. So um, this is a setting that we already have on Blossom, um, which you might be familiar with. Um, if I go to the setting section and go down to uh, learning, tracking and reporting, you have a, an option here to only use secure to mark progress. So if you were to switch this on, um, it then removes emerging and developing from the drop down, and you're able to just mark statements as secure. You can also use the development matters characteristics for fit, effective teaching and learning. Um, and again, works in a very similar way. So you can just uh, tick off each of the individual statements. And you've also got the Dev Matters observation checkpoints to use as well. So if you did want to evidence any of these, um, again, you're, you've got the flexibility to be able to do that. Um, something we will be uh, bringing out, uh, which isn't going to be available um, in, the, in the first version, but it will be available closely after that, um, is the ability to link the development matters to areas of learning. Um, so that's something that will be coming out soon. Okay, so for the dev matters, um, there are also a couple of other changes that I'll be taking you through. Uh, one is the framework page. So again, just a few small changes here. Um, in the drop down again, you can select the development matters. Um, you can also select development matters, observation checkpoints. Um, and with both of these frameworks, you can use your professional judgment to mark um, progress for statements. So by clicking on a statement, you're able to um, mark the specific progress, um, save and update. If I click back in, you're able to see the progress history just as you can see now. And again, anything that's come through observations will also be viewable here. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the changes on the formative report. So if I click create formative report, I'm gonna select my term, my report period. And create the report. Um, now mine's gonna look slightly different to yours. Um, as I've got all of the frameworks turned on. Um, for you, you'll only be able to see the frameworks 
that are relevant to you. So the ones that you're using within your setting. So I've just clicked through to the Dev Matters part of the formative report. As you can see, there aren't too many changes here. Um, as the new Dev Matters no longer has aspects, we have reflected that on the formative report. So here, as an example, under communication and language, you can still mark your progress level, um, but it is for the area as a whole. Um, so you've got the same measures here that you're used to. And then you've also got the updated age groups. And again, you've got your optional comments and next steps for home. Um, observation checkpoints aren't displayed on the formative report. Um, however, you do have the Dev Matters characteristics of effective teaching and learning. Okay, so as a whole, that's Dev Matters and how and how it works on Blossom. Um, now we're going to take a look at Birth to Five. So with the Birth to Five Matters, there are a few changes. The first of which being that when you link observations to the framework, I'll just select this from the drop down. Um, you can no longer link to statements. Um, you can link to areas of learning. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how the Birth to Five Matters framework will work on Blossom. So with the Birth to Five Matters, um, we at Blossom have been working alongside the Early Years Coalition to ensure that the philosophies of the Birth to Five Matters are reflected across our app. Um, so with that in mind, there are a couple of changes. When making an observation and linking to the framework, you are now able to link to areas of learning. So if I go down to the Birth to Five Matters, you can see that you're able to link to um, areas of learning when making observations. We've also got the birth to five characteristics of effective learning, uh, which you're able to link your observations to. This is the framework page for the birth to five matters. As you can see, the main change here is that you're unable to mark progress for individual statements um, by updating your professional opinion. However, you're still able to access the birth to five matters framework within the app. So this is the birth to five formative report. As you can see, there aren't many changes here. Um, you're still able to update the progress level with the, the terminology that you're familiar with. Um, and here you're able to select the birth to five matters ranges, um, which we've updated. And of course you can add your comments and next steps in as usual. Okay, so now to walk you through a couple of small changes that we've made across the next steps feature. Um, so of course, we know that some of you may no longer be using next steps uh, or maybe using them in a very different way. Uh, on Blossom will still allow you the ability to add next steps if you wish. Um, and we have made a, a couple of changes to this. So when adding a next step, you would select your framework. So for example, Dev Matters 2021, you select an area and we've added a little bit of guidance for your staff team um, just to give them a few ideas of what to think about when creating a next step. You're also now able to create next steps based on the characteristics of effective teaching and learning. So again, you're able to select a specific area um, such as active learning, playing and exploring, uh, creating and thinking critically, um, and writing next step more focused on that. We've also updated how the observation tracker works. Now the observation tracker only counts the areas of learning that the observations have been linked to. I know from speaking to our customer base that some nurseries won't be cohort tracking and others do still want to be able to monitor the children's progress. Is the cohort tracking function still going to be available on Blossom? Yes, we're still going to have cohort tracking available um, for the nurseries that do want to use it. So I can take you through it now and show you how it will work. So 
there aren't too many changes to the to the cohort tracking. Um, I can start with the progress tracker. Um, so if you select your area of learning um, tracker, and of course the frameworks have been updated, so you can select birth to five or development matters. I'm going to select development matters. And then, of course, select a term. You've got all the same filters as you had before. And once I click generate, you'll be able to see the only changes to the dev matters uh, trackers is, of course, we're now tracking by area of learning. And um, so that's been updated here. Um, and then you can also see the um, age bands have also been updated. You're still able to add your action plans on as usual. Um, and we have made a slight design update. Um, so we have changed the colors on the cohort tracking just to make them a little bit more subtle, um, just to make, again, the, the tracker a little bit easier on the eyes. Okay, so now let me show you the other progress tracker and how that's been updated. Again, the same changes have been applied. So you can select from the list of frameworks, select your area of learning, Got the same filters and once you click generate again the updates here are you know the change in colors um the updated age bands and everything else is exactly how you remember it so now to take a look at the comparison reports and so you can select one of your comparison reports from here again we've updated the framework so i'm just going to select the dev matters term and an area and again we've got exactly the same filters and if i click generate you can see that we have made a couple of small updates to the comparison reports um, one being we've adjusted the colors again um, to make it a little bit more subtle um, and also what you'll notice is in the table under the pie chart uh, we no longer show the statements that the children are working on and the statements that they have achieved. Um, but you can see the children um, that are emerging, expected, exceeding um, in the pie chart itself. Okay, so now to quickly show you how it works for birth to five. Um, again, the changes are really, really minimal, um, but I will run you through it just so that you get an idea of, of how it will work. I'm just gonna select all my, my filters um, and when you generate your report, so this is the same for whether it's a progress tracker, whether it's a comparison report, you'll see that, you know, instead of age bounds, it has been updated to the ranges. And again, all of our cohort tracking is based on your staff's knowledge. Um, so there is, th th there has never been any automation and, you know, there isn't any automation going forward. So this information is taken directly from the formative assessments um, that your staff uh, complete. Now that the new EYFS has strong focus on reducing staff workload, I'm aware that many nurses will be doing this by reducing the amount of observations that they create throughout a week. Is there a way on Blossom that they're going to be able to share the child's development with the parents without creating the observation? Yes, yeah, there is. Um, so on Blossom, you'll still be able to share photos and videos with parents. You can do this through our diary feature. You can do this through the newsletter feature and you can still use the observation feature to share golden moments with parents. So, you know, you could be sharing photos and videos um, of just, you know, a, a special moment with a parent um, without, you know, writing up the, you know, the long narrative if you didn't want to or, you know, linking through to areas of learning or statements. So the platform is flexible enough for you to be able to use that feature just to, yeah, to still keep parents engaged. We've included some useful information below on the Birth to Five and Dev Matters frameworks. Thanks for watching. And wishing you a smooth transition to the new EYFS.